All right, y'all, I'm back with another episode at the Back to Life podcast with my man, Kurt Majit. I uh, played football with this guy at the University of Tennessee in Knoxville, uh, which is about an hour and 45 minutes from Chattanooga, Tennessee, my hometown. Um, I'm not going to introduce you too much, man. Why don't Ooh. you tell the people who you are, what you do? Like, who is Curtis Majit and why are you sitting here, man? Well, Curtis Majit, I'm from West Palm Beach, Florida. I'm born and raised, went up to the University of Tennessee, um, played football, went over to in, um, Indianapolis, played professional there, played professional in Canada. I um, got to a point where uh, I was unsure of what was next, so that's I decided. Normal. Yeah. That's normal though, that's normal, just, yeah. just, to, just to clarify. So, what was next after that? Challenge myself, like, what can I do? What's like different? Um, what am I good at? What am I bad at? What's some opportunities for me and what's some threats to me? Okay. And um, one threat being to me was having seven surgeries, you know, and a fractured hip. So I knew that playing football wouldn't be sustainable a long time. In four years? Yeah. Five years? Five years. Within, it was five years I had seven five surgeries. Five years, seven surgeries. Yeah. And your bread and butter, the way yeah. <laughs> you made your money was by playing American football. Yeah. And you had seven surgeries. Seven surgeries. And you still made it through. I made it through. Perseverance. <laughs> Yeah, I like that, man. So yeah. tell me about this. Like during those tough moments, I mean, there were tough moments, right? I don't Certainly. want to speak for you. Tough moments. Um, what was it that like kept driving you? Why did like person? Yeah, we talk about it. Perseverance, push through it. Like it's all cliche, right? Like keep fighting, keep fighting. And it ends up being reality. Like that's what we should do. Yeah. But what really drove you to never give up? Like what drove you not to quit? I would say my household, my dad, um, my mom passed when I was two. Okay. And just watching my dad do things. He dropped out of school in ninth grade, rough upbringing, but he mm -hmm. sacrificed, was committed to us. And at an early age, I knew what hard work, commitment was. I knew what that looked like. And to play a sport of football, work out, do the right thing, it's not hard work. Ah. It's not hard work compared <laughs> to what he did. Right. So for me to continue day after day, do the, thing, do the right things in order. And every time I build myself up to a high level, have a surgery, get knocked down. Hmm. All right, one step at a time to build myself back up, get knocked down. Right. So now you're talking about the mental aspect, which was probably the hardest part. Right. Is um, acknowledging, you know, becoming vulnerable, talking about Straight it, up. journaling, and um, not holding emotions within because it was tough. Right. But having good teammates and, and guys like you, um, AJ, Reese, Maven, yeah. Herman, like a lot of those guys that I was able to be around and um, disclose some things right, too. Right, right. That that was that, that was probably the hard part sitting out. So would you say that like it's it's a lot harder in life to go through by yourself? Is it like I know we talk about like you always got to have a team, and I'm realizing mm -hmm. that as I'm getting older, like having a team is so crucial. And mm -hmm. playing football, playing any sport, soccer, football, like you name it, right? Um, volleyball, having that team always makes up for what you lack, right? You may be the best let's say defensive end or linebacker, mm -hmm. but you can't be the best safety. Right. So would you say like, for anybody out there that's like feeling alone and down and just like down and out, like mm -hmm. that's not, we're at a point in our life, this age where like I'm 26, how are you, 27, 28? 26. 26, you're yeah. 26, geez, we're the same age. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I always look up to him like a big brother. So, um, but at this point in our life, it feels like we can't do it by ourselves. We feel like we need people. Would you say that like sports in general, um, kind of creates that idea of camaraderie and teamwork and um, whatever you want to call it, like yeah. is what helps us grow as individuals. Yeah, certainly. So there's a, a quote that I like a lot. If you want to go fast, go along. Hmm. If you want to go far, go together. I like that. And that came to my mind in, in so many different aspects from, from ball to off the field. We don't know everything. We can't do everything. And when we surround ourselves with people that's either further than us right. or have done it or that exactly. can do it, then we can figure it out, you know, and that's from a emotional sense, a professional sense. Right. So it's really, um, one thing I'm very passionate about is surrounding myself with people that's alike me. I love that. And that's that's not easy, because right. I'm a different man. kind of guy. You know what <laughs> You're I mean? You're telling me, brother. Man, <laughs> especially you, cut, like, for instance, I just spoke about this on one of my last podcasts with my mm -hmm. guy, Gage Winton, um, and we talked about how, like, I, I said this quote when I was graduating from the University of Tennessee Chattanooga after I left UTK and I said like surround yourself with people as driven as as you and success is inevitable but then mm -hmm. I was like hold on if we're only driven the same way mm -hmm. how will we grow so I was like you got to get people that's going to pull you out of your comfort zone not mm -hmm. necessarily competing I'm not competing with you but you're 
advantage or whatever you're doing in life, if I like what you're doing, it, it creates this drive within me to be like, dang, I need to be more creative. I need to be Certainly. more spontaneous and go jump in the ocean with sharks. <laughs> and we'll get to that. He swam yeah. with sharks in the real ocean, <laughs> like without cages. But um, that's the crazy thing about life, man, is that mm -hmm. like, as we get older, we realize that we're at these points where like life is not easy mm -hmm. and we need other people. And that's the simplicity of it. Yes. Like that's the, literally the reality and that's the, that's is you break it down. And like you said, guys that you played with like AJ, uh, Herman, um, Raves Maven, anybody. Mm -hmm. um, and those are people you still keep in touch with today. 100%. Literally, like yeah. I know personally, um, he still keeps in touch with a lot of these guys that I keep in touch with. And that just shows you that when you find those people that you connect with and that you mesh with, it literally drives you to stay competitive. Right? Certainly. Like Certainly. within your own field though, you're not mm -hmm. doing what these other guys are doing and that's what I love to see. Right. Like we talked about this earlier um, when he walked in the house and I was telling him, uh, one of our friends, his name's AJ Johnson, he plays for the Denver Broncos, which is, if you're watching from around the world, it's American football. And uh, the, the hardest thing is, is that when you play a sport, you, you get consumed with it, especially mm -hmm. from a young age, right? You start in little league, you get to middle school, high school, college, people yeah. treat you like you're this God, right? This yeah. symbol, and we get lost in yeah. that. That's our identity, and then once it's done, we don't know what to do. Yeah. But what I respect from like you and AJ, um, and a lot of guys that like I still keep in touch with is that like, we never let football define who we are. That was just a part of our life. That was yeah. one chapter in the book, right? Mm -hmm. You got done reading it, and it was time to move on. But I want to know, like, what was football to you? You got to play, man, yeah. at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, man. Yeah. One of the, like, most famous, traditional, popular schools in the freaking country. Um, and you started, man. You played a lot of games. You got to run through the T. Yeah. Like, let's talk about that. Like, let's mm. tell people what that feels like. All right. Before like, that, real and raw, though. Yeah, real and raw. 100%. Okay. I'm going to take it back a little bit. So okay. what you were talking about is called identity foreclosure. You know, we all been growing up since six or seven years old doing one thing, right? right. And by the time I was nine years old, I made the all-star team. By the time I was 14, I was going into my sophomore mm -hmm. season. I was receiving scholarship offers. So through that time, being a number three um, outside linebacker in the country, everyone and everybody around me solidified my identity in that. Right. You go, you're the best player. You're the best this, right? And... Um, Despite the small percentage of people that actually make it professional mm -hmm. and have a sustainable career, that's all we focus on. Right. Right. So then when that time is up, instead of being 65 and retiring, right. you're 24 and you're 25 yeah. and, you, and you're, you're completely done with something you've been doing for 19 years. Right? What do you do? Right. What do you do? <laughs> exactly. But um, yeah, so my time at Tennessee was amazing and I went and traded. A lot of people ask, um, do I regret my injuries and this whole... This whole process, the whole journey has been amazing. Right. You know, coming in, starting as a freshman, coming from South Florida, growing up on the beach, coming up to the mountains, meeting people with country accents right. and boots. Like All you do is listen to country music now. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Jeez. It's, it's been awesome. Um, running through the tee, playing in front of 100,000 people. You know, um, 100,000. Yeah, 100,000 people. 102, 455, right? Exactly. That's a number we'll never forget. 102,455 people is a packed stadium at mm -hmm. Neyland Stadium. Yeah, and it's, it's, um, it's, wow. it's, quite, it's quite a scene when you, you make a sack in the middle of the field and you go like this and you hear oh, the crowd man. get louder and louder. Yeah, but. Um, I feel it right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it just brings this, yeah. It. But um, yeah, so yeah, man, my time at Tennessee was awesome. You know, I grew a lot as a person, learning how to communicate, learning how to be a better leader. Right. And I think through my adversity that was um, outside of my control, right. um, in my injuries, made me think different. All right, let's, let's build better connections, let's build more connections with people. Um, let's be intentional with the time that we spent outside exactly. of football. So that's when I went and did a couple internships and, you know, um, did more volunteer work. Right. You know, try to figure out how can I be a leader from the sideline, right. you know, while I'm on crutches and my team still need me, how do I do, um, push some type of energy and let them know that my buy-in is still as high? When even I'm, when you're down, even, even when, when you're down. at your lowest point. When I'm in a training room, that was my game day. Right. So that's crazy. Man. I got to be there early and I got to stay late. And every day I would ask the trainer, what's more 
what more can I do when I'm not here? You know what I mean? So taking that mentality, those um, those um, intangible skills yeah. and those lessons I've learned, I've been applying it to a lot of different places and it's been beautiful. It's crazy that you like bring all this up because like sitting here thinking about it, like I remember the moments we went through, right? Like waking up at 5 a.m. or 3 a.m. And, uh, and jumping in pools with full on sweatshirts and hoodies mm -hmm. and doing things that literally broke you down to your lowest point where you thought, what am I doing with my life? Mm -hmm. Like you start questioning, like, is football even important? Like, do I want to play football? Yeah. Like, do I actually enjoy this sport? And 10 years down the road, you look back and you're like, man, some of my best character characteristics, uh -huh. some of my best character traits have been developed because of this sport in those of moments. football and in those moments. Uh -huh. And um, it's hard to sometimes like in the moment feel that. Like I was telling you during my travels, probably six months out of the year, I felt depressed, mm -hmm. right? No one would have known. Mm -hmm. I smiled through it. I pushed through it and I just kept giving it everything that I had. Mm -hmm. But those moments are, are what make you. Right. Like, I don't like to say those moments are what break you because I wasn't broke. Exactly. You feel me? Like, yeah. I, I picked myself up and was like, I'm not broken. I'm just hurting. Mm -hmm. Like, I got a flat tire. I'm not, I didn't lose the whole thing. I just, exactly. just got to patch it up and yeah. keep moving. Yeah. And then we're going to get it back. We're going to get solidified. We're going to get a new tire on it. We're going to get rolling. You know, so like, that's the thing where it really hurts me to see people that do give up mm -hmm. so quickly, man. Um, and I just want to talk more about you and what you're doing now. Like, yeah. you text me. Um, before doing this and you're on the way he yeah. came from uh, you've been on vacation you yeah. said for like a month now yeah you got he's doing his MBA um, at the University of Tennessee Knoxville which is masters in business smart guy over here <laughs> um, so if you need any kind of money tips hit him up but um, long story short you got a month break so mm -hmm. you decided to go travel Palm Beach Florida Colorado mm -hmm. where else uh, New Orleans. New Orleans. Yeah. Um, Georgia a little bit. Yeah, yeah, Georgia. And then coming uh -huh. through here to Chattanooga, stopping yeah. in. So you've just been all around right now. Yeah, yeah, a lot of travel. But you text me and we're like, yo, check this out, man. I got, I'm a published photographer. Yeah. We got to talk about that. I don't even Let's know do what it. that means. What is that? Like, Let's do it. What does that mean? So um, I, I got into photography during one of my injuries. Okay. And it was a chance for me to create, you know, get away from, get away from ball. All right. right. And um, it was amazing because it was an opportunity to learn something from the ground level. Yeah. Not understanding anything of it. So over the two years, there was a lot of times where I messed up shoots or I didn't, the, the image didn't come out the way I wanted, you know, and I, I worked really hard and I'm trying my best and right. reaching out to my mentors and, you know, really challenging myself. So this past summer, I did a wedding in Memphis right. and um, I shot with Donald Page. He's the head yeah, photographer yeah, yeah. for the Titans. And uh, we did this beautiful wedding, um, Adam and Meredith, yep. at um, a museum in Memphis. And congratulations! Photos, yeah, <laughs> photos came out amazing. We just got word last week that, well, actually it was New Year's Eve. I was with my girlfriend, and we, um, I got a text message and it said that um, the photos that we took were in the Southern Bride magazine. So all yeah. credit goes to your girlfriend. <laughs> good things start happening when you find a good woman, right? There we go. You want to tell you you want to tell everybody who your girlfriend is? Yeah, uh, yeah. She, like, come on over here. We're doing a podcast in the house, but come on over here. We're gonna introduce you. Girl. She's just kind of standing here quietly, kind of jump in the middle here. Um, you introduce yourself. <laughs> yeah, this is the, the Back to Life podcast. It's all good. I'm Back to Life. I'm Ivy. I'm Coach Girlfriend. <laughs> this is Ivy. Where are you from? I'm from Indianapolis, Indiana. Originally as well. Originally from Indianapolis, Indiana. Okay. Third yeah. year medical student. Oh, you got yeah. a good one, brother. <laughs> now I see what he's doing. He got him a medical student. He's getting his MBA. They're going to open a practice together and then the world's going to be history. Wow, man. Just let me get like a 1% royalty for, for just there being a go. friend or something. I don't know. All right. Thank yeah. you, Ivy. I appreciate you. Um, so yeah, anyways, that's pretty cool, man. Mm -hmm. So you got published in the newspaper, or no, I'm sorry, magazine. magazine mm -hmm. um, and that's dope. Because mm -hmm. I was actually telling my brother uh, today, I was like, man, like, it's crazy that these guys like forget who they were before football because yeah. football was instilled at such a young age that right. you almost didn't get the opportunity to say, I like mm -hmm. this or I don't like this. It right. was like, you like football, go play. Exactly. And you have no choice. You're like, heck yeah, I like exactly. it. I'm cool. I'm fast, mm -hmm. like everybody likes me, 
Why not? I like mm-hmm. football, right? So, and, and that's a lot of sports that, that happens to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And then we lose that identity as soon as we like detach ourselves from that notoriety, from that place of, oh, you're so good at running the ball or you're mm-hmm. so good at kicking the ball or hitting a ball with a tennis racket. And then we're like, wait, who am I? Right. Um, and you found that in photography. You mm-hmm. found that in being adventurous. You found yeah. that in being, I like to say like you, like yeah. you found Kurt Majit. Yeah. Along the way. Yeah. You know, but an innocent Kurt Majit. Yeah. <laughs> Not somebody Nico told you to be or AJ sure. told you to be or whatever coach, but like Kurt got to speak up for Kurt and Kurt got to enjoy what Kurt liked to do. Yeah. Um, what does that feel like? Like, what is that feeling of going, I chose this <laughs> and I'm good at this? You didn't tell me what yeah. to do, but I'm good at it on my own. It's awesome. All right, so when I finished playing ball, right when I finished, we got back, I got back from Nigeria with Ivy and her family. And Nigeria, man. There you go. <laughs> we got back and I said, all right, um, I, I can talk to people. I can sell right. things. So right when I get back, let's go get my real estate license. I got my real estate license. Um, I got my photography um, business right. up and running. Uh, I started working with the program. I threw an event um, in East Tennessee to okay. help the local community. And, you know, so through small victories, those small victories and stepping outside of my comfort zone, right? That's what's propelling me, right? And you know, I, I picked up running, and it, I don't enjoy running. And you had seven surgeries. <laughs> yeah. Why are you still running? <laughs> exactly, because you know, I like to I like to make a vision. I like to to have a goal. I have, like to to see something. I want to go attack it. Exactly. And and it, I want to have a, a smart goal, um, specific, um, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time sensitive. So. I know whether or not I reach my goal. I'm not going to just say, I want to go yeah. run. I want to go run this many miles at this pace. Right. And did I do it or did I not? So that's the kind of mindset I, I have. And um, it's been awesome continuing to challenge myself and develop over time. And that's so cool, know, though, man. That's yeah, so cool to hear. Like, because it's easy for me to get like lost in what I'm doing and lost mm-hmm. in like, you know, I need to create content and I need to go here and I got to travel here and forget about the rest of the world. That's yeah. so easy to do. Right. Right. But like staying connected um, with people that I feel have that same vision and that same drive is so like, the, I guess the word is satisfying or mm-hmm. like, motivating. Like it just feels good. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the best way I can say it is because having those type of people to be able to like text every now and then or yeah. call every now and then. Cause of course you have your life, you got a girlfriend, you got certain things to do. I got certain things to do. We can't be in each other's phones 24 mm-hmm. seven. But as soon as we text each other, it's <laughs> like, bro, where are you at? Like yeah. everything good. Like it, like it never wavered. Nothing ever went wrong. It's just there. And it's like, bro, I'll see you in a month or two months or in five years, mm-hmm. but you pick up like you never left off because yeah, you have exactly. that same energy. Yeah. You know? And, and that's where I feel like a lot of people lack, um, themselves is they don't know what energy to bring to the table yeah. and they, they try to take on Kurt's energy or they try to take on Nico's energy or AJ's or whoever for that matter and that's not who they truly are mm-hmm. and like that gives me goosebumps talking about it because I know so many people that try to put on this this face or this mask or like like take that energy from somebody else right. to make people think that's who they are. But when they go home at night and when they're by themselves, that's not who they are. Yeah. And they hurt. Uh-huh. And I hurt for them. You know, like yeah. I, I did a, I dropped a little uh, freestyle video on yeah. Instagram yesterday uh, or whenever that day is when we dropped this video. But a couple days ago, I dropped a freestyle video to a song called Eastside. Super popular song, right? Just being funny. Stuff you do with your homeboys, right? Yeah. Like imagine when we were in college and we turned on the, an instrumental or when like draw the order, like when, yeah. when y'all used to get around and you would just start rapping or we yeah. were in the, in the locker room and it was just, you start saying the stupidest stuff. You're having the best time of your life. Uh-huh. Just in a moment. But we're so afraid to post that stuff because it might not get a like. Yeah. And that's what the world has become. Mm-hmm. You start valuing people's opinions more than you having fun and being truly happy. 100%. And that's crazy to me. Like, yeah. I posted that video and it got 100 <laughs> shares. Like, a freestyle video yeah. got 100 shares on Instagram where I'm literally just rapping about who knows what I was even talking Being happy, smiling. Uh, finding a girl, 
and then saying, no, I'm still traveling the world, some blah, 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 yeah. blah, just being me, yeah. being Nico, like the people that people are like, man, he really doesn't care. Mm -hmm. Just being that guy. And it gets a hundred shares in less than 12 hours. Yeah. That's what tells me that like people just want you to be your simplest form. So even at our simplest forms, like that's when I truly think we're the happiest. That's when I truly think we find like what truly makes me happy. Right. And social media has tainted that for a lot of people and making them think that the only way I can post something is if I get a lot of likes or shares mm -hmm. or comments or whatever it is. But I think that takes away from your identity. Mm -hmm. Like social media has created so many alter egos and fake identities where people are so depressed and committing suicide or, or having to get like mm -hmm. um, diagnosed with depression or going to get re, uh, rehabilitation, like stuff like that. And that's the scariest thing about the world we live in is because it's so easy, especially, and you, you were, I met you at UT playing college mm -hmm. football. That's why I keep touching on this. Like college athletes right now are in such a place, like a vulnerable state because Agreed. literally they are put on the spotlight. Like they're the most important people in the world and they're playing a game. Mm -hmm. And that's what we forget is mm -hmm. that it's a game. Yeah. Like it's a child's game that we get paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to go to school for free, millions of dollars to play in the professional leagues. Like you get endorsement deals, sponsorship deals. At the end of the day, it's a game that's Agreed. used for entertainment. That will come to an end. That will come to an end. Mm -hmm. God bless the sport. It's an amazing sport. It teaches so much character. It teaches yeah. so many different lessons. Beautiful vehicle. Straight up. Yeah. It's one of the most beautiful mediums to be able to use to get a young man to become a grown man mm -hmm. or an adult or a mature individual. But I think like this whole identity crisis and you called it, what did you call it? Uh, identity foreclosure. Identity foreclosure. Like that's the craziest thing to think about is because it's so real. Right. It's so freaking real, man. The most beautiful thing about life, in my opinion, is everybody's different. Um, since, exactly. since I was young, I've always had like a, a genuine interest in just talking to people and just listening and learning. And I almost proving myself wrong from an early age is because it's normal. We look at somebody and we kind of try to figure out, oh, where they may be from. Look at how they dress or how they talk. Right. And we try to put them in categories, try to put them in boxes. So, but once you have conversations with people and you start understanding, oh, we have similarities or maybe this or maybe that. And um, the more we grow and the more we um, expose ourselves to and the more people we talk to, right. we realize like what I'm doing, this sport, it's a sport, That's you know, it, and yeah. we're people. And, this For person, humans. yeah, this yeah. person is super cool, and you know, so I, I think one of the biggest things from football, <clears throat> my ability to relate to others um, okay. from being a leader, and the wide array of friends that I've made of from course. brotherhood, man. Yeah, and not, not even just on the field. Right, it's been people like I've met so many support staff, people. like yeah. the athletic trainers, the yeah. photographers that you still keep in touch with today. Exactly, that you shot a wedding with mm -hmm. in Memphis. That's not even near your home. Yeah. <laughs> and you met him at UT, correct? Yeah. Because he was shooting the pictures at UT. Exactly. Like, that's the craziest thing of, like, the world of networking. Like, football is great for mm -hmm. whatever it is that you want it to be great for. Like, I tell people all the time, perspective is everything, right? Mm -hmm. If you have a perspective of negativity when you wake up, your day is going to become negative. Yeah. I love when you tweet out stuff, and I'm not heavily on Twitter as much mm -hmm. as I am Instagram, YouTube and stuff. But when you tweet about like being in competition with yourself today and understanding like having that confidence and that positivity when you wake up in the morning, I think people overlook that. Like, can mm -hmm. you go into a little more depth? Like, yeah. What is it about waking up with that right attitude, with that right mindset? To me, it's that first snap. It's, it's if, you, if you're a defensive football player or if you're a point guard on, in basketball, whatever you are, like, that initial drive, that the first thing you do, when your alarm go off, the way you attack that is gonna set the momentum for the rest of the day. That's the rest of the game. So when your alarm go off, you hit the snooze button, you look at it, I look at it as like a false start. Right. Like, all right, I'm, I'm already oh, off to a bad start. You messed up. You, yeah, so I'm like, all right, <laughs> where do we go from here? Right. But if I hit that alarm, I mean, if, if my alarm go off, I jump out of bed, I get my push-ups in, mm. I do my devotion, I get my day going, I like that. I'm winning. Yeah, and, it, and it's easy to win one day, easy right. to win two days, three days, four days. It's easy to win a couple weeks, but right. then when you go into that month, a month and a half, and two, three month mark, 
are you still consistent on a, on a consistent basis, exactly. right? So it's, so it's small a challenge. Wins, small mm -hmm. wins throughout the day yeah. create that immense impact. 100%. And that's what I love about the process. I tell people all the time, like, how are you trying to fall in love with the finish line when you don't even yeah. know what the process entails? Yeah. Like, I have a lot of people that once I blew up, like, they're like with my small, to me it's small success because yeah. I have such a great vision. But let's say I have the 150K on YouTube, 100K mm -hmm. on Instagram. That's a lot to, to people. Like, to myself, I see it as a lot, mm -hmm. but I know where I'm trying to go. So I'm like, no, I'm yeah. just getting started. But that process mm -hmm. of like getting there and then I, and people are like, I want to be famous too. And I'm like, why? <laughs> yeah. They don't have a reason. Yeah. And I said, if you want to become famous just for the notoriety of I'm famous, you're going to get lost. And I say lost in the sauce because yeah. you don't know what you stand for. Yeah. You don't know if you're trying to help people. Like now I have a podcast. Now uh -huh. you're in my house. Yeah. We're talking about <laughs> ways to motivate people or I'm traveling the world on my back to life videos. And I'm showing people different cultures, different foods, different way of lives. Like it's something that I can fall back on even if I'm not famous mm -hmm. through social media that I can still do and feel okay with. Right. But if you just become famous, just to become famous doing something, let's say stupid or out of the ordinary or that's not truly you. Right. It's like, what do you lay your head down at the end of the night and think about right. and go, wow, I'm so happy with my life. Mm -hmm. I could keep doing this. And I think that's like a big thing about the world and the, the times we live in today is that we, we don't want small wins. Mm -hmm. Just to touch back on what you said, when you wake up, you don't hit that snooze because that's a loss, mm -hmm. right? Why start with an L when you can start with a W by hopping up and doing your push-ups? And it's mental. It's, you make a decision. You know, we make... This thing is powerful, man. We make thousands and thousands Jeez. of decisions every day. That we don't even know. Yeah. We don't even think about them. They exactly. just happen. Exactly. Golly bum, man. Yeah. And, and people you know. fail to realize that. Yeah. But I it's think, not their fault. Like yeah. one of our coaches, I'm not going to say his name, but um, <laughs> unconsciously incompetent. Mm -hmm. You don't know what you don't know. Right. That is one saying. Shout out to Butch Jones for that, man. <laughs> Freaking whatever, man. Yeah. Shout out to you, Butch Jones. You, you gave us a, uh, that's the one thing I remember from you, man. <laughs> um, but unconsciously incompetent. People don't know what they don't know. Mm -hmm. And because of the life that we live here and what I've been able to experience in different cultures and regions, um, of the world, I realized what we don't even know that we have. Mm -hmm. Like the simple thing of being able to pour this water out of my faucet and drink it. Right away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I'm drinking yeah. <laughs> faucet water and I won't have an upset stomach. Right. I can't do that in India. We're in April. Right. I can't I do that in Sri Lanka. Right. I can't do that in a lot of places that's not the Western world. And we tend to forget that even those small little things and those tiny little things we should be grateful for are like victorious moments. Right. Like this is a victor. If my friends from India come here and I pour them water out of the faucet, they're looking at me like, yo, are you sure about that? Yeah. It is funny to yeah. us, but that's real life there. Mm -hmm. And luckily somebody told me and I didn't go and mess myself up, but like that's the reality behind big wins in America for us when we're talking about like how to be successful in life, how to do things. It's like noticing those little things that 95% of the majority overlook mm -hmm. like are actually so important. Yeah. Uh, like that snooze button that mm -hmm. people hit, they don't even know that that three minutes, they already decided their day was going to be negative. Right. Three right. minutes or 30 seconds, and man. You, when you, you wake up and you say, I'm tired. Well, I don't feel like oh. that's, you know, you're feeding that monster and you Literally. Don't continue to feed that monster. So I'm big into mindset, right? Yeah. And you know, I, after having seven surgeries and like, you know, when I fractured my hip, I was on crutches Dude. for four months. Um, it's not easy, you know, and, and to be intentional with each detail, each small thing, you right. know, I'm not as OCD or, or um, perfect as somebody I know, but I work, yeah, I work. <laughs> what did you say? We're all, we're all, we're all different. different. We're yeah, all different. we're all different. And, you know, I'm consciously working to try to do the small things right more often and more consistently but Come on, man. yeah man um, you can only do what you can do yeah and that's 100%. what that's what we fail to realize as human beings we, we're trying to do what kurt i'm trying to do what kurt does and what my brother does and blah 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 like you can't try to live other people's lives mm -hmm. or try to live the life that someone else is living when your reality is something completely different yeah um and that's what going into just like what we've been talking about um and to start wrapping up this whole segment 
is just talking about like being yourself, mm -hmm. being true to who you are and taking the time to finding who you are for what it is that you actually like as a human, not what somebody told you to believe in. Mm -hmm. um, and I told him earlier that you swam with sharks. Yeah. And I want to tie that into this, man, because that's something like, come on, bro, like yeah. swimming with sharks in the real ocean with yeah. real sharks. Like this ain't no little fish you just find swimming in your aquarium that you can train. Like this is yeah. a real shark in the deep blue ocean in Florida. <laughs> 100%. Just to draw y'all a picture, like a real, <laughs> like it will bite you, okay? Yeah. Tell me how you were able to overcome everything outside of you. Like mm -hmm. for anybody out here searching for some motivation, um, like I've jumped off cliffs mm -hmm. that I would have never jumped off if I didn't have a camera on me. But it made me yeah. do something that I loved. Yeah. And I was like, I'm so glad I did that. If somebody right now is looking for a little bit of motivation, they need a little extra push in life because yeah. they are struggling. How were you able to jump off of a ship in the middle of the ocean or a boat and jump in with shark infested waters with a camera mm -hmm. and actually film it without passing out and dying? <laughs> <laughs> Let's not forget yeah. to mention and dying. So going back to what you said, you know, talking about um, trying different things, you know, you know, figuring out who you are. Right. Like I said, when I got done playing ball, I, you know, understanding that passion is developed. You know, we don't wake up passionate about something. You got to try something right. and you get a feeling from that thing. Exactly. Right. When you, when you do well and you right. succeed in something, you get a good feeling. People validate that and you want to, you do whatever it takes to get that feeling Come again, on, right? Somebody play some, uh, some hymns or something. We yeah. need some, bring the church in. We need some yeah. choir. Come on. So, um, with the passion being developed, um, I've always been passionate by the ocean. Of course. My favorite animal is a dolphin, yeah, but I have, a, I have a really good friend, Chris Cameron. He's a guy that's the guy to finger in a lot of different things, like right? He's, 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 he's a really good dude. And um, so the group I, I went and dove with is called the Shark Addicts in Jupiter, Florida. Okay. Amazing guys. They're very professional what they do. Um, we went out a few miles offshore and he actually hit me up the night before. He was like, hey, Kurt, we going um, swimming tomorrow. You in a row? <laughs> the night like, before. Come yeah, on, exactly. <laughs> he, told me, he told me later. He was like, I didn't want to give you time to back out. So Jeez. he hit me up right before we went out. I was like, all right, Kurt, you going swimming with sharks in the morning? And he know my, my, my mindset. I'm like, all right, I'm down. Like, all right, let's go. It's going down. So driving out, everything is good. I'm smiling. I'm saying what's up to everybody. Oh, man. The, the, this is my first time. I've done it probably five times now. But um, so... We driving out. Everything's good. Beautiful hold on, day. hold on, hold on. I just kind of missed what you said. Did you? <laughs> hold on, you just kind of screw screwed it right past me. Did you just say that was my first time? I've done it five times now. Yeah. I was kind of in this day. We've been talking for like forty-two minutes. Yeah. Five times you swam with the deep blue real shark. Snap, snap. Yeah. Like real shark ocean. Yeah. Okay, go back to the first time. All right. So my very first time. We riding out. Beautiful day in South Florida. Parting cloudy, mm. sunny. We got good music, Ryan, Shark Addicts, music I'm blasting. With, I'm with you. So I'm hanging out. We pulling up to the spot where, where we're gonna, gonna jump in. So now I'm kind of like, hmm, it's about to happen. And the reality hit when um, Mickey, Ooh. one of the Shark Addicts, Mickey goes, all right, here's the rules. Keep your eyes on the shark. Shark come towards you. Move your hand real slowly toward him. Sharks are very smooth. Don't go outside past this mark, and I'm just like, all right, well, like what? Oh, man. I'm already out here. I gotta do it. I said I'm gonna do it. Get in the water with a snorkel. You know, we, we're, we're free diving, no cage. We get in the water with a snorkel, and I'm a snorkel. <laughs> Save your life with a snorkel. <laughs> it was interesting, man. It's beautiful. I would say. What did you feel when you're? You know, when you jump into the ocean and you yeah. feel that bloop bloop. Yeah, and um, you're in the deep blue sea, like sea, like this ain't this ain't three feet, four feet, five feet. Right. You have to swim hundreds, hundreds, yeah, hundreds, hundreds of feet, feet to get to the bottom of the ocean. So yeah. you can only imagine. I don't even want to imagine what that felt yeah. like. I'm getting nervous thinking about it. When your feet hit that water, yeah, and you realize I'm in the deep blue ocean mm -hmm. with real snapping teeth sharks that mm -hmm. will bite me. So maybe. <laughs> yeah. What did you feel in that moment? From like the most serious. Yeah. Like, I guess life opening, boom. Anxious for sure. 100% anxious. But the second thing I felt, because I have a, a big heart for the ocean, mm. I'm a guy that you won't see throwing plastic or anything right. in the ocean. And 
Um, same with the Shark Addicts. Those guys are very professional, like I said. So the second feeling I would say is free. You know, it's, wow. to describe it, it's kind of, kind of almost like watching Animal Planet um, through these goggles to see these huge- <laughs> Watching Animal Planet <laughs> through goggles. Okay. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was pretty cool. <laughs> see like safe. these huge sharks just going right past you and you getting all up close to them and seeing how how beautiful their scars are, that their, how, their texture and, you know. Did you touch them? Uh, one time, yeah. Yeah, one of them. Not, not the very first time. But, um, you touch the real shark from yeah. like the deep blue ocean. <laughs> yeah, you can't you can't go you can't go fast though. You just gotta like as it going by just real slow. But um, like yeah. I, I feel my chest kind of like starting <laughs> to get all fast, heartbeated and whatnot. But yeah. I, so I I swam next to dolphins mm -hmm. in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. I've had to search for them for like three days. <laughs> Finally found them. Yeah. And we jumped in the ocean. We swam out there. Me and my cousin David. Uh, long hair don't care guy if you ever watched any of my Hawaii vlogs. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Oh yeah, we, I just introduced them on FaceTime one uh -huh. time. But like, that was frightening because I was like, I don't, they have little tiny teeth, but like sharks are completely opposite. They have like big teeth, right? Yeah. And there was one shark that I won't forget, had a broken jaw. Oh. So his, mouth, them, is, his mouth is open the whole time, sharp teeth on both sides and his eyes just pretty, a little bit bigger than normal bull shark. So he, his eyes are just... And he got like this look, and I'm just like, all right, this one's kind of making me oh. uncomfortable. <laughs> but and you just looked him in the eyes and said, I'm here. <laughs> We're both swimming in the ocean. Yeah. This don't belong to you, and it don't belong to me. We're yeah. just here. We're swimming. here. That's crazy, man. Yeah. So my man played football at the University of Tennessee Knoxville. Played in the NFL. Played in the CFL, which is Canadian League. Mm -hmm. um, now you're getting your master's degree in business. Mm -hmm. You got a girlfriend in mm -hmm. medical school. Mm -hmm. You. Played the right cards, brother. I'm just joking. No, but super duper awesome, man. Like that journey right there, you became mm -hmm. a photographer along the way, a published photographer at that. Um, you're traveling the world. You yeah. got friends all over the world. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're just being Curtis Majit. That's it. Yeah, like... Man, shout out to shout out to whoever raised you, man. Like Appreciate that's a it. like seriously, man. Shout out, you know. I know you said you lost your mother at a young age, but mm -hmm. like shout out to your dad. I know you post about him and stuff like yeah. that, but like that's not easy, man. And I know you have a one brother and yeah, an older brother and um, older sister. So a brother and a sister, like to be able to do that yeah. is not easy. And like to see, and I've seen your brother on your post, like I, yeah. he's doing well, like mm -hmm. coaching football, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. And I don't, I don't know. I haven't seen much of your sister. Yeah, she um, works in Atlanta. In okay, lives in Atlanta. She's like doing well. Come on, man. So yeah. shout out to your dad. Um, that's super cool to see. And like to see that everybody took a different route. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. you're doing your thing. Your brother's doing his thing. Your sister, your dad's doing his thing. Mm -hmm. And to see that like type of relationship y'all still have yeah. is super cool, man. Even to see mm -hmm. it on your social media and all that. So yeah. um, I just want to say thank you for stopping by Chattanooga, Tennessee. Yeah, exactly. Shout out to Ivy for letting him stop by. Because <laughs> at the end of the day, when y'all get married, she's making all the decisions, just so you know. Uh -huh. um, anybody that's watching this podcast, once you find the right woman, she will make all the decisions because she's the right woman, so she makes the right choices. Um, so uh, I hope y'all agree with that. But anyways, thank you so much, y'all. This is Kurt Majit. Met him at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. Still my brother to this day. Um, keep smiling, brother. Keep inspiring. Sure. My dog, thank you so much. Well, how it go? Oh, back to life. <laughs> All right, y'all, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a huge thumbs up. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at NicoTJR so you can see these things happening as the days progress. Make sure you check out ShopBackToLife.com. Grab you some merch, support the movement so I can go interview awesome people like this all around the world and just give you everybody's stories because this is a mobile podcast channel. Um, if you haven't yet, hit that bell, turn on your post notifications, and make sure you hit that subscribe button. But Back to Life family, I'll see you on my next episode. Peace.